Hey everyone, this is Sam from In The Mix. Today we're back with another DIY project for you guys. This time we're making custom dust covers for a pair of Focal Twin 6B studio monitors. Studio monitors do come in all shapes and sizes, but this process can be easily adapted for most of them. Let's get right into it. For these monitors, we need a piece of fabric that measures 36 inches long by 54 inches wide. I chose a light vinyl because it's cost effective and a little thicker than your average cloth fabric, so it's more durable. It's so much easier to color match vinyl with Music Studio gears as well. If you decided to go with vinyl, it's best to use 100% poly or nylon upholstery threads. I also recommend finishing the raw edges with double fold bias tape. It adds extra support and makes the cover look better. Of course, you also need a regular home sewing machine, scissors, a soft sewing tape measure, ruler, and a marking pencil. As with other monitors of this type, Focal Twin 6B has a simple rectangular cabinet. There are no slanted edges and the overall shape is pretty easy to work with. The most challenging part is the back panel, where we have the power and the audio cable. The power cable doesn't really pose a problem as the cover can easily slide over the cable. However, the XLR cable sticks out way beyond the dimension of the cabinet. There are multiple options to deal with such cables. Ideally, you want to be able to put on the cover without having to remove back cables. For this project, we decided to make a narrow cutout in the back, so the cover will fit nicely around the audio cable. These speakers are actually wider than the speaker stands I use, so I can finish off the cover below the base of the speaker. If you use a different type of stand, or if you have the monitor sitting directly on the desk, then you would need to measure the drop length accordingly. It's best to have all the cables connected while doing the measurement. Some of these connections may extend beyond the exact dimensions of the cabinet, so you would want to take those into consideration as well. I want the cover to fit comfortably loose so it won't damage the speaker cones. To have the extra space, I'm going to add an additional half inch to some of the measurements that I am going to take right now. Starting from the widest points, I'm measuring 19 and 3 quarters across for the front and back panel. It's going to be 20 and a quarter with added half inch ease. Next, it's going to be one measurement across the front, top and back panel. This would be for the big piece that goes around the monitor. I'm going to start here at the lowest point of the speaker, going straight up over the front and top panel all the way across the back to the base. It's measuring 32 and a half inches. Rounding up to the next big number, I'm measuring 13 and a half inches across for the side panel, plus a half inch ease, which is going to be 14 inches. There are no slanted edges on this particular model, so it's going to be 10 inches tall all around the speaker. For the back panel, I would like to be able to put on the cover with cables plugged in. For this particular monitor, I only have one XLR cable that sticks out about three and a half inches. We can just add this extra amount to the measurements and have the cover go over the cable, but that's going to make the cover uneven and baggy, and it just won't be a nice and tight fit. Instead, we'll keep the measurements the same as the front panel, but we're going to add a narrow cutout around the audio output jack. For monitors with more connectors in the back, there's going to be another workaround towards the end of this video. We're going to cut three pieces all together. One big piece for the main body, which is going to cover the front, top, and back panel, and two identical smaller pieces for the left and right side panels. We also need to add seam allowance to these pattern pieces. I'm going to give a generous 3 quarter inch hem allowance for the sides that touch the base of the speaker. So that would be 3 quarters for the front, and 3 quarters for the back of the main panel, and also 3 quarters for the long lines at the bottom of both side panels. The remaining lines for all three panels will receive a half inch seam allowance. The reason I'm giving three quarter inches to the bottom edges is so that I'll have more control over the drop length. We can always trim away the excess fabric later on. After adding additional fabric for seam allowance, I cut the main panel that measures 21 and a quarter by 34 and a half and two side panels that measure 15 by 11 and a quarter. Here you can see the main panel has a half inch seam allowance for the longer sides and three quarters for the front and back. The side panels have a half inch seam allowance all around and three quarters at the bottom as that's the only line that's going to touch the base of the speaker. This is how the main piece is going to cover the front, top and back panel. 
The fabric is fairly soft and flexible and it will nicely curve around the edges and hang down on both sides. Here we have a half inch seam allowance that is going to get sewn to the side panel and a three quarter inch hem allowance at the bottom of both sides. Now we need to figure out the exact placement of the cutout for the back panel and the main panel. It would be much easier if we made a cardboard template and then use that to draw the basic shape of the cutout on the fabric. We want to make sure that the cardboard is made to the same width and it includes all the ease and seam allowances. So if we place it on top of the fabric, it should perfectly line up with the side and bottom edges of the main panel. For the height, the cardboard can be just a few inches taller than the connector jack, so we don't need a big piece that covers the entire main panel. For this particular model, the audio jack is more on the lower left side of the back panel, so we can go ahead and focus on this part of the speaker. Because our pattern piece includes ease and seam allowances, we should also add them to the measurements for the connector, so the cutout will be placed in the proper position. For the first one, I'm measuring 4 inches across from the left side to the center of the jack. After adding a half inch for the seam and another half inch for the ease, the total measurement is going to be 5 inches. For the height, just to be on the safe side, I'll go about an inch higher than the top section of the connector and will make it 5 and a quarter inches. Then, I'll add the 3 quarter seam allowance at the bottom, which is going to be 6 inches. Based on these two measurements, I made the cutout template on the cardboard. It's about an inch wide, which will let the cover slide around the connector comfortably. Then, with the right side of the template facing down, I lined it up with the back panel and pen traced it on the wrong side of the fabric. The reason I marked it on the opposite side is that if we turn the fabric right side up, the cutout is going to be on the left side where it should be. I'm going to use a sample to test the next few ideas. I want to make sure that my measurements are accurate and also I'd like to see how it looks and fits before I start cutting into the main panel piece. The actual cutout should measure 6 inches tall and 5 inches from the center to the edge of the fabric. Next, I'm going to draw a larger rectangle around the cutout marking that measures 3.5 inches wide and 7 inches tall. Then I'm going to cut out a smaller piece of the same material to this measurement. The reason I'm going with a backing piece much bigger than the actual cutout is that it'll be easier to work with it later on. I'll go ahead and put both pieces face to face so that the right sides are touching. Once the smaller piece is properly lined up with the markings, I'll pin it to the outside of the main panel. Now we need to stitch and secure this small backing piece to the main panel. I recommend that you do this step before the main panel is sewn to the side panels. Starting at the back, I'm going to use a straight stitch right on the marking. I'll back stitch at the beginning and at the ends of my lines to secure the ends. I'll follow the marking all the way to the end of the line. Towards the end of the line, you can slow down and just walk the needle to that point. When we stop to pivot at the corner, we're always going to want to stop with a needle inside the fabric. I'll continue sewing right up to the next point and pivot again. I'll sew the rest of the line the same way. Try keeping the line as straight as possible. And then backstitch at the end to close the line. After the small backing piece was sewn to the back section of the main panel, I made this marking about a quarter inch along the seam line. I'm going to follow this as a guide so I won't get too close to my line of stitching. And then I'm going to cut both top and bottom pieces together all the way around. Now, both pieces are cut, and this is what it looks like on both sides. Next, I'm going to turn the raw edges of the backing piece under the main panel. Before I do so, I'll go ahead and make three small slits inside the seams. If you're using a thin and flexible material, you won't need to do this. One slit here, just close enough to the seam, one here in the center, and one on this corner. Starting from the side, I'm going to turn and fold the backing right to the very edge and use pins to secure it. Make sure the bottom edges are matching. You want to get the fold as neat and smooth as possible. Work your way around and do the same thing on the other side. While you're doing this, if you feel the fold lines are kind of jaggedy, 
Just remove the pin and correct the fold. Finally, here's the top section where we made the slits. We'll do the same thing here as well. Pull the fabric nice and tight and pin it down on both sides. If you can't stretch and turn your fabric like this, you definitely need to make those small cuts first. Once I have the backing piece firmly folded and held in place, I'll go ahead and sew it down close to the edge of the cutout. I will top stitch about a quarter of an inch from the edge and go all the way around. Here, I've lined up the needle at the edge of the folded cutout. I'm using a thread that matches this fabric perfectly. I'll start top stitching a straight line and back stitch to secure the thread and then keep sewing all around the outer edges on the main panel. Go nice and slow all the way to the end point. Keep the needle down and pivot. Continue sewing up to the next corner and pivot again. Sew all the way to the end. And don't forget to backstitch to close the line. Here, you can see how the raw edges of the cutout are nicely finished. I also trimmed off the excess fabric on the inside. Try not to get too close to the seam line. Okay, so my sample piece worked out pretty well. The cutout is the right size, in the right place, and a perfect fit around the XLR cable. So I went ahead and repeated the same steps and made the cutout on the real main panel. Now, the main panel is ready to be sewn to the side panels. Now that we have all three pieces prepared, we can go ahead and sew the two side panels to the main panel. The way we place the side panels is important. Place them in the opposite corners, but make sure to use the corner that has the cutout, and the bottom edges with a 3 quarter inch allowance lined up with the front and back edges of the main panel. As long as you use this configuration, the fabric is going to be on the left side of the sewing machine, which makes them easier to sew. So again, make sure the fabrics are as flat as possible, the right sides are touching, and the edges match up properly. While you're sewing, you can use small sharp pins to keep the panels in place. Just to give you an overview, I'll start sewing from the front corner up to the next corner. Pivot the side panel, keep sewing up to the next corner, pivot one more time, and sew up to the end of the line. Then we'll do the second panel. Starting from the back corner, sew up to the next corner. Pivot the side panel. Keep sewing up to the next corner. Pivot again and sew up to the end of the line. Let's go ahead and sew the side panel to the main panel. Starting at the front, I'm going to use a straight stitch right on the half inch seam allowance. Go nice and slowly till you get up to an inch away from the next corner. Stop near the end of the line and leave the needle in the down position, so there's going to be a little gap between the needle and the corner. Following the next line on the side panel, we're going to make a small cut on the main panel. You can mark the line or use a pin and follow that as a guide. Raise the side panel and right under the line make a small slit on the main panel. Make sure you're only cutting the big panel underneath. The cut should stay within the seam allowance area so you won't cut into the stitch line. Then, come up to the corner and stop with the needle inside the fabric. Pivot the material, place it right alongside of the big panel and line up the outer edges. Put down the foot and continue sewing up to an inch away from the next corner and do the same thing. Just before you get to the corner, stop and leave the needle down. Following the next line on the side panel, make a small cut on the big fabric underneath. We're doing this so the fabric will turn easier. Finish sewing the line, stop with the needle inside the fabric and pivot again. The outer edges of both top and side panel should line up. Continue sewing and this time finish it off at the very end.
backstitch at the end to close the corner. Next, we're going to sew the second side panel to the back side of the main panel. Place the side panel horizontally on the corner with the cutout and line up the 3 quarter inch edge with the front section of the main panel. I'm going to start sewing from the back corner so the fabric will be on my left side. Again, make sure the right sides for both panels are touching and the side panel is properly lined up with the main panel. At this point, I'm repeating the same process pretty much. You can make these corner slips ahead of time if you don't want to deal with them once the fabric is under the needle. This way you can keep sewing up to the corner and pivot. Sew up to the next corner and keep the needle down in the fabric and turn the side panel. Always make sure both panels are lined up perfectly. This time I'm going to sew all the way to the end and backstitch to finish off the corner. Now that both side panels are sewn to the main panel, they should look like this on both sides. If you're using a thick material, you can trim the corners or any excess seam allowance to make them less bulky. We still need to tidy up raw edges at the bottom. Also, this would be a good time to decide about the drop length. I have a 3 quarter inch hem allowance for the bottom line. That means there's 3 quarter inch of fabric that can be folded over. I'm going to use a little less than that because I want the cover to drop a little lower than the base of the speaker. Now I'm going to enclose the raw edges with a double fold bias tape. It'll give it a neat look and also stabilize the cover. Just slip the bias tape over the fabric and sandwich the raw edges right inside the middle. Then use pins or secure it with your fingers and sew the tape in place about 1 8 to 1 quarter inch away from the fold. This tape will be hidden so you won't even see it on the outside, but you still want to stitch as straight as possible. Once the tape is stitched in place all the way around the cover, I'll use the width of the tape and fold the edge to the wrong side, so this is about a half inch fold. This time, I'll keep the foot right at the edge of the binding. I'll stitch close to the folded edge on a straight line. This works on most fabrics and will reinforce the bottom edges. Okay, here's the moment of truth. We have an absolutely perfect fit over the speakers with and without the cables plugged in. I also want to make one additional comment about speakers or other devices such as mixers that have multiple inputs and outputs on the back. Obviously, it won't be a good idea to make a separate cutout for each connector. Instead, leave the back corner sides open and let the back section serve as a flap. Hopefully, you'll be able to use this video as a guide for your own monitors. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to share it with us in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see you soon.